We begin tonight with a warning to the community from a sex survivor of sexual abuse. I had not up until that point realized what he had done was, you know, raped me or a crime. The man who raped her is now in prison, but she says more people need to be held accountable. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Nadine Woodward. That woman's abuser, the leader of a religious cult in Minnesota, accused of 59 counts of sexual abuse. While he's in prison, attorneys say members of his cult have relocated to Spokane. This is Victor Bernard serving a 30-year term for sexually abusing young girls in his flock. Now one of his victims wants more people held accountable. KXY Force Melissa Luck working for you with this powerful story of abuse. And Melissa, attorneys are concerned that this could be happening right here in Spokane? Yeah, Nadine, it's important to note five people named in a civil lawsuit today are not charged with a crime. But attorneys and this young woman you're about to meet say they are dangerous in their own right and that the community needs to be aware of the signs in this case that the group is operating all over again. Can I give you something? Hi, there's a cult here in, in near Spokane. A cult? A cult that is, uh, they abuse children and she was one of their victims. An unusual greeting in downtown this morning as Lindsay Tornambe and her attorneys walked up to strangers and shared her story of sexual abuse. We're suing them, but nobody in Spokane knows anything about it. And so we're out here leafleting. I'm giving out copies of the lawsuit so people can have a better understanding. It started decades ago, 1,300 miles away, on a compound called the Shepherd's Camp where this man, Victor Bernard, had his run of young girls who thought he provided a direct path to God. His ordination signed by trustees, their daughters entrusted to him. Victor, the sex, was always a way of him showing us how much God loved us. And um, the more we dedicated our lives to him here, the better place we had in heaven. Brought here by her parents when she was just a kid, Lindsay lived with other young girls in what Bernard called the House of the Maidens. And then it was shortly thereafter that Victor first sexually abused me when I was 13 years old. It went on for years. Sometime around 2009, many in the group picked up and moved to Cheney. It wasn't until after she left the group in 2010, Lindsay realized what happened to her and many others was rape, not God's will. And while Bernard sits behind bars, members of his group still live in the Spokane area, including two of the men who signed his ordination. Two live in Cheney, Pamela and Randall Rourke. Craig and Susan Elmblad live adjacent to a South Hill Elementary School and run a cleaning business. And Bernard's former wife, Stephanie, now lives in Liberty Lake. Again, none are charged with a crime. But Lindsay contends they knew all along what was happening to the maidens and never tried to stop it. I feel now that all those who knew should um, deal with their consequences of their actions and... Um, be held accountable for what they did and not helping stop and protect children. She flew to Spokane today to spread the word. Her attorneys committed to justice. The law requires us, if as adults, if, if we see something, we have to do something. And confident that the cult that allowed the abuse is operating in our community. So we just want people in this area to be aware of what's going on here in Spokane. And since posting this story on our website today, I've already heard from one person reaching out to me saying she was raised in this group mm -hmm. and that she wants to see justice done. If you see something suspicious or you know anything that investigators or attorneys should know, I've put their contact information attached to this story on KXOY.com. Melissa, incredible story. What a strong woman. How is she rebuilding her life? Well, she is struggling. She said she has dark days, dark moments. Mm -hmm. She has done these interviews before, but mm -hmm. she told me afterwards it's still hard to do so. She says she gets strength from people reaching out to her saying they're inspired to come forward because of her story. Yeah. She also now has a two and a half year old daughter who says she has given new purpose in her life. Oh, I bet. Great story. Thanks a lot, Melissa.